Hey guys, Ms. Raymond here today to talk about probability part two. Um, first, we're going to review um, what we talked about last time. So last time we talked about finding the likelihood of an event um, and we talked about how the probability of an event is the number that measures the likelihood that the event will occur and that probabil probabilities are between zero and one, okay? And this diagram, we went over this diagram about how this relates to likelihood, right? Versus, um, and the probability. So likelihood being at zero, impossible, right? At um, one fourth or 0 0.25 or 25% unlikely equally likely to happen or not happen was at one half or 0.5 or 50% likely to happen is at three out of four or 0.75 or 75% and certain of course is one and 100%. Okay, so we looked at it in terms of likelihood and today we're going to move on and we're going to talk about finding the probability of an event. Okay. So um, the key idea here, and this is from bigideasmath.com, um, when all possible outcomes are equally likely, the probability of an event is the ratio <clears throat> of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes, okay? And the probability of an event is written as P, which stands for probability, and then you have in parentheses here, event, right? So probability of an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes, okay? And we're gonna look at an example. All right, so um, we're gonna, we've gone over the key idea of finding probability, so then we're gonna look at an example from the Big Ideas Math. Oops. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so here's example two from Big Ideas Math. It says you roll a number cube, and a number cube is the same thing as a dice, okay? What is the probability of rolling an odd number? Okay, so we have to think about, well, how how many uh, sides are there to a dice, right? So let me get my pen here. So we know on a dice, we have there are a total of, there are six sides, right? So, right, so um, what are the numbers that you would have on a dice? That's what we need to determine first, right? Okay. Let's see. All right. So we know that there are six um, sides to a number cube or a dice, right? So it would contain the numbers one through six. So let. All right. Look at the answer. How would we solve this? Well, the first thing we want to do is use our probability ratio. So remember, we said the probability of an event, so P of an event equals the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So your favorable outcomes um, would be, in this case, this is rolling an odd number. So that is what we mean by favorable outcomes, is what is it? that we're finding the probability of. Possible outcomes is the total number of outcomes, right? Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to replace event with odd because what we're trying to find out is the probability of rolling an odd number. So we say P or probability of an odd number, okay? And there are three odd numbers on a dice, one, three, and five right, or your three odd numbers. There's a total number of six, right? If you have a dice, one, two, three, right? 
four, five, and six, right? Because there are six sides to a dice. Okay, so we're trying to find the probability of an odd number. So we know that one is odd, three is odd, and five is odd. That's where the three comes from, right? There's three odd numbers. There is a total of six numbers on the dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is our bottom number, right? So three over six, remember it's a ratio of favorable to possible outcomes to three over six, right? And then we will, would want to simplify. You want to simplify when you're doing probability, just like you do when you with fractions in general, right? So I will show you how to simplify in case we don't remember. So I'm gonna write over here to the side because we had three out of six, right? So three out of six, well, I know that three can go into both three and six. So I'm gonna divide by three on the top, divide by three on the bottom to simplify, and three divided by three gives me one, and six divided by three gives me two. So in the end, your probability of rolling an odd number is one out of two, which is a half, which we know, if you think of it in terms of percent, it would also be 50%, right? All right, we're gonna watch the tutorial, uh, look at another example. So we're gonna do that next. All right, now we're gonna watch the tutorial. All right. You roll the number cube. What is the probability of rolling a number greater than four? Remember, the probability of an event is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. First, let's make a list of the possible outcomes. On the number cube, the numbers that you can roll are one, two, three, four, five, or six. These are the possible outcomes. Now let's find the probability of rolling a number greater than four. The number of favorable outcomes are the outcomes that are greater than four. This is five and six. So there are two favorable outcomes. The number of possible outcomes are one through six. There are six possible outcomes. Now we need to simplify. Two sixths can be simplified to one third. So the probability of rolling a number greater than four is one third, or about 33%. All right, so hopefully the tutorial helped a little bit. So um, we have gone over the key idea, finding a probability of an event. We've gone over the big idea as example two and the tutorial. So now we're going to complete a couple problems on your own problems, three and four together, and then we're gonna complete a little mini assessment. All right, so um, let's look at on your own, problem number three, and it says in example two, what is the probability of rolling a number greater than two? All right, so for example two, if we go back to example two, this was example two, right? Probability of rolling an odd number. So um, remember there was a total of six uh, numbers on our number cube, right? So, so, all right, so what is the probability of rolling a number greater than two? All right, so we know we want to look at finding probability, right? Start out by writing the probability of what are we finding? A number greater, right? Greater. And two, okay, right? So,
So the first thing we need to do is to find out what are our favorable outcomes, right? That goes on top. So favorable. Oops. Favorable outcomes. Not very good at writing with this pen. All right, so favorable outcomes over possible, right? Possible. Outcomes, right? All right, so in this case, if it's a dice, we know that, well, what do we know? How many sides are there to, whoops, to a dice? Well, there should be what? One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? Sorry about the... So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six possible outcomes. There's there are six sides to the dice. And we are trying to figure out how many are greater than two. So we just need to count, right? So we got one, two, three, and four, right? So that would be four over six. So four over six, right? And then we just need to simplify. So we know that four and six are both even numbers. Oh, I should be able to divide by two, right? See if you, if you need to get it, pause and get a calculator, go for it. So four divided by two should give me two and six divided by two should give me three. So the number of favorable outcomes to possible outcomes should be two out of three, two thirds, right? Or, um, Right, so that means that it's a pretty good probability, right? All right, let me go ahead and clear all those. And then we're gonna look at, um, it says in example two, what is the probability of rolling a seven? So still looking at a dice, a dice has how many sides? six sides, right? So we got to look at, think about, well, what, hmm. So probability of rolling a seven is what we're trying to figure out. Right, so favorable outcomes, right? I'm gonna just put over outcomes over possible, right? Possible outcomes. Okay, so, well, how many favorable outcomes do we have? Well, maybe we need to look at possible first. All right, so possible outcomes. If you have a dice, we have what, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So our possible outcomes goes on the bottom, right? Oops, I spelled that wrong. Um, so, let me fix that. All right. So possible outcomes is six, right? And I um, want to figure out what our favorable outcomes are. Well, we know that there's only six sides, so is there a number seven, right? There is not a number of seven. Oops. And so, whoops, I used the wrong. All right, here we go. So our 
favorable outcomes is going to be zero because there is no seven on a dice because there's only six sides with numbers one through six, right? So it'd be zero out of six, or you can just simply say zero, which is the same thing as zero percent, right? There's a zero percent probability that you're gonna roll a seven because there is no seven on the dice, right? All right. All right, so we're going to complete um, the mini assessment. So um, I really want you to give this a try. Um, we will go over it, but I want you to see if you can figure it out. All right, so it says you randomly choose one number below. Find the probability of the event. So problem number one says choosing an even number. Okay. So that means that you are finding the probability of getting an even number, right? So probability of an even number, right? That's what you're finding. So you need to decide, well, how many even numbers, because that's your favorable event, over the number of possible outcomes, right? Which is your total number of numbers that you have, right? Possible, right? So see if you can figure that out and we will, we will go over it, okay? So even, so you need to go up here and find which ones are even. All right, so I want you to go ahead and try that. You can pause the video and let's see what we come up with, okay? All right, so we've got two, six, 16, and 20, 22. Hopefully that's what you came up with. I only count four even numbers, so I'm gonna put four. Remember on top was your even numbers, that's your favorable outcome, so four over your total or possible outcomes, and so we need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a total of ten possible outcomes or ten numbers. So it's going to be four over ten. Okay, so hopefully you remember at this point that you need to simplify, right? So four over ten, that one should be pretty easy because four and ten are both even numbers, right? So you know you can always try dividing by two to simplify. All right. So four divided by two, 10 divided by two. So four divided by two should give us what? Two, right? And then 10 divided by two should give you five. So the probability of choosing an even number is gonna be two over five, two out of, or two out of five, right? All right. Let's go ahead and Look at the next problem. I'm going to clear all that. So problem number two is choosing an odd number. Okay, we did even before, now we're doing odd. So now you're finding probability of an odd number, right? So again, remember, you're putting your favorable outcomes over your possible outcomes. Okay, so favorable is what we're trying to find, which is odd. So we need to go up here and count how many odd numbers do we have. I want you to try to see if you can figure it out, okay? So you can pause the video. All right, so five, what do we got? Nine. 13, 25, 27, and 31. Let's see, see if that's what you've got. So that's a total of what? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So six goes on top, because that's your number of favorable outcomes. That's what we're finding the probability of, right? The number of odd numbers. And the bottom is going to be possible outcomes, which is your total number, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
So 10 is going to go on the bottom. Okay, so hopefully at this point you remember you need to simplify your fraction. So 6 over 10, again, two even numbers. So I think, well, I can always divide by 2. So 6 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2 should give me 3, and 10 divided by 2 should give me 5, right? So that means probability is 3 out of 5, OK? All right, um, I think that we might try a couple more. So let's see. I'm going to skip number three, and we're going to move on to number four. All right, so let's go look at number problem number four. That's the one we're looking at. All right, so choosing a number greater than 30. All right, so probability doing a number greater than 30. So I'm just going to put the greater than sign 30. OK. All right, so we got to go up here and look and see what are our favorable outcomes. Well, we're looking for numbers greater than 30. I only see how many? I only see one. Hopefully that's how many you have. So you can go ahead and pause the video so you can try to go ahead and finish this. And then you can tune back in and uh, see if you're right. Okay. All right, so one goes on top because that's our favorable outcome. And on bottom, remember is your total number of outcomes or possible outcomes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we only have a probability of one out of ten. Okay, which is not a very high probability, right? All right, let's try one more problem. So choosing a number less than two. All right, so get my pen again. You want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out uh, what you need to do. And then you can chain back in and check. So probability of a number less than two. Okay. So how many numbers are up here less than two? Hopefully you've decided that there aren't any, right? So that would be zero, right? And again, we still have the same number. The possible outcomes are still 10 numbers, right? So you put 10 on the bottom. So that would be zero out of 10. Your probability is zero, zero out of 10. Or if you wanted to say it in percent, you would say that is zero percent, right? All right. Now, I'm just going to make sure. Let's see, two out of five for the first one, three out of five. We didn't do number three. And then one out of 10, and then zero. All right, so hopefully you learned something um, about finding probability of an event. Um, I believe I assigned for you to go to study jams and watch a video where they explain um, again about finding probability and give you a little bit of practice there. And then you should also have some written um, practice lesson for you to complete as well. So that should be for the next day. All right, for tomorrow. So thank you and hopefully you are well.